Does size matter? The answer is yes. It does, especially when you're talking about camera lenses. I mean, right off the bat, it's super obvious to tell that these lenses are completely different physically, so they probably do completely different things. And before I continue, one of the most important things to note when you're talking about different sized lenses is their iris. Okay, do you guys see this hole right here? It's basically just like the iris on a human. It can let in more and less light depending on how wide it is. And every single different lens has a different maximum and minimum their iris can stretch or shrink to. And that specific term is called aperture, so if you hear me use that, we're talking about the iris and how wide or small it can get. First, we're gonna talk about this tiny 50 millimeter lens. So this is what I would consider a small lens. It can't zoom in, it can't zoom out, it's fixed. And when someone says a lens is fixed, it just means you can't adjust it its focal length. So the way lenses measure how wide or small their iris can get is f-stop. Here's the ironic part that doesn't make any sense to me. Really wide irises are represented by really small numbered f-stops. So right here on the front of this 50 millimeter lens, you can see it says 1.8 and that represents its f-stop. So basically what this f-stop number means is this specific lens can make its iris get really wide and it can let a lot of light in. And Will, why does that matter? Well, let me tell you. So since this 50 millimeter lens has a 1.8 iris, it can let just so much light in, you can make a really narrow band of focus. For example, look at this picture of a ceramic globe I have. Notice how only a small part of the actual globe is in focus and the background is incredibly blurry. So that's why someone might want a smaller lens is because you can let so much light in, you can have a really narrow band of focus, which has a lot of aesthetically pleasing effects. Like look at this portrait I took. It's just so crisp, the background is so blurry and it even has a little bokeh. So basically when you're using a smaller lens, it's best for up close and portrait photography. Now, if we tried to do the exact same type of shot with this big 55 to 250 millimeter lens, it's not gonna look as good because bigger lenses usually have higher f-stops, which means you can't get a narrow band of focus, or as narrow as one of these smaller lenses. So let's do the exact same shot with the globe, but with this lens. So since the 55 to 250 millimeter lens doesn't have as low of an f-stop, there's not a really narrow band of focus on the globe, and the background isn't as blurry. Actually, you could get the same kind of effect with the blurry background with the zoom lens if you make it go all the way out. But you know what that does? Distort the picture. So we're gonna zoom this lens all the way out in this next picture. And do you see the globe? The background is really blurry, but the globe is significantly I mean, it just looks different. It looks distorted. Now put that next to the 50 millimeter shot of the globe. Do you see the difference? The background is blurry, but the globe looks like a lot different in each one. Just another example, look at these pictures I took of my subject. Can you see how her face is getting distorted the more I back up and zoom in? Just another example to why this isn't the best for portrait photography. However, that doesn't mean that this lens is better than this lens. It just means that this one's better at something else than this one. For example, say you wanna be hired by National Geographic and you're trying to take a nice wildlife nature picture, but what you're taking a picture of is something that could get away or move so you want to keep your distance and take a picture from far away this 50 millimeter lens is absolutely useless in that scenario like look at this picture if i wanted to take a picture of that thing right there <laughs> this picture is terrible if what your goal was to get up close. Now, let's use this 55 to 250 millimeter lens. I can zoom in real tight on my subject and get the picture I wanted from really far away. So nature photography or wildlife photography or even landscape, if you want to get a picture of mountains from a distance, this telephoto lens or any longer lens is going to be way better than a fixed 50 millimeter lens because when you're filming outside or recording outside and you want subjects in nature, you're gonna wanna have the ability to zoom in and out because things in nature tend to move around. So does size matter? Absolutely. And like I said, not one lens is better than another lens. They all just do different things. And you wanna know my favorite lens? Actually, it's this one. It's a cup.
So wrapping up this video, I'll give you my recommendation. I actually think you shouldn't just have one or the other lens. I think these are actually cheap enough to be able to own both of them. Both of these lenses together are only $500. And if any of you guys are photographers or cinematographers, you know that's actually on the cheaper side of lenses. Or you could meet in the middle and get this lens right here, which is actually my favorite lens. If I had any recommendation, it would be to get this lens. It would be to get this lens right here. It's an 18 to 135 millimeter lens. So in summary, the best in the middle lens would be the 18 to 135 because you can get wide and zoom shots. Great nature photography would be the 55 to 250 millimeter lens. Best portrait photography and up close of anything would be a fixed 50 millimeter lens. And I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it made sense. Actually, if you want any of these lenses, I'll link them in the description below. All right, guys. Where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day.